welcome to the Human Flourishing Project. I'm your host, Alex Epstein. Good to be back. If you haven't uh, heard the show before, this is a show about human flourishing. And human flourishing is human beings living at our highest potential, which really means living in a way that integrates the best of what's possible to us mentally and also the best of what's possible to us materially. And one thing that I've realized in trying to study human flourishing is that so much of pursuing human flourishing is getting knowledge of human flourishing. And so much of getting knowledge about human flourishing is developing better internal systems or methods of gaining knowledge. Because it turns out when we look out in the world and try to get knowledge of how to flourish, it's really, really hard. And one of the one of the big themes of this show that I've talked about is knowledge acquisition systems. How do we how do we improve our minds such that we can separate knowledge from non-knowledge? And in the first episode, I brought up the question of nutrition and just talked about how it's so difficult to figure out what's true and what's not. And people have been asking me, okay, when are you going to actually talk about nutrition? You've talked about a lot of other things in human flourishing, but you haven't talked about nutrition. And one reason I haven't talked about nutrition is it's just hard and it's intimidating because it's not my specialty. And yet somebody needs to tackle it, at least from the perspective of how do we as people who aren't specialists try to get good knowledge about that? How do we consult experts? How do we process what they say? What questions do we ask? Things like that. So the good news, I I hope it's good news. It ends up being good news. If you're interested in the nutrition issue is next week, I'm planning on talking about nutrition. And I'm going to warn you, this is not Alex has figured out everything about nutrition, but I want to have you join me in my journey, tell you what I've, what I've observed, 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 wow, not good pronunciation today, what I've observed so far, and also get your collaboration. And I think along the way, we'll learn a lot about knowledge acquisition. And in parallel, by the way, I'm always trying to refine my knowledge of knowledge acquisition by my work in energy and industrial progress, which I know a lot about factually. So that's always helping me as just a, as an example. So when I'm when I'm doing that work more and more and more and there's going to be some new announcements in terms of a new project there next year, that should help me here. But it is a little bit scary because it's not my realm, but then again, it's just so necessary that someone does something about it. So I hope that's exciting to you. I was going to start talking about that this week, but there's one subject I want to talk about before that and and that's what I'm going to cover this week. And the title I'm giving this is The Weekend Crisis and the Playtime Planner. The Weekend Crisis and the Playtime Planner. And if you heard the show several weeks ago, maybe a month ago now, about rejuvenation, you know, I'm, a, I'm obsessed with rejuvenation. I think it's a crucial aspect of human flourishing to be able to renew ourselves, renew our energy, renew our clarity. And I mentioned uh, in in that episode that I've worked a lot over the years on developing processes for me to rejuvenate during the workday. And I I think this is something that I've gotten very, very good at. And on the show, I generally try to share things. If I'm sharing anything of my own, I try to only share things that I have a long track record of success with because if I just share random stuff, then that defeats the purpose of being a show, one of whose themes is getting real knowledge. But in today's case, I want to warn you, I want to talk about an aspect of rejuvenation that I am not good at in many ways. And so I just want to tell you that, but I think it's, I think I'm definitely right about the problem And I myself am taking some steps toward the solution, and it's something where I really want the community, the human flourishing community, to participate. And this is what I call, the issue is what I call the weekend crisis. And the short version of it is that I think it's a crisis that human weekends are overwhelmingly 
wasted. You think about what a weekend is. Now, weeks are wasted, too. That's another issue where people don't enjoy their work enough. Uh, But let's leave that aside for now. Even people who do enjoy their work, and I'll include myself there, I think, and I don't mean if you're great at this, I'm not going to lump you in. I don't mean everybody has my same challenges, but I see this a lot where I just I just look at, okay, think about the weekend. I've done all this work. I've accomplished a lot. And now I've set aside a day or two where I can do so many different things. Now, I might be limited by money and certain commitments, but there are just so many things that I can do in the world. And part of the reason why I've worked during the week is to give myself the opportunity to experience, to consume a lot of what the world has to offer. And yet, what are we doing during these weekends? I just read that Netflix is now 15% of internet consumption. I think a lot of it is, I think the, the default pattern is not being really clear or intentional about the weekend. And then the weekend comes and then we feel reactive and then, okay, let's look at what's on Netflix. And I'm not a big Netflix person, but when I'm at home on a weekend and I feel compelled to look at what's on Netflix to see if anything stimulates me, I feel like I've done something wrong. And so this is an area where I readily admit weekend rejuvenation is a a weakness of mine, but in a particular way. I'm I'm quite good at enjoying myself and, and just being relaxed on a weekend, but I just find that I don't put the same amount of thought into my weekends as I do into my weekdays. And there's just so much that can be done. And so much of this stuff is stuff I don't have that much time to do it by definition if I only have one or two weekend days a week. And it's the kind of thing that as I go through my life, there's so many things I would like to do. And I want to make sure that that my weekend time and in general, my my recreational time is spent in a good way. So I call this play time for fun. And I was thinking about this today, and I was thinking, you know what? I do not have my weekend well planned, and I keep resolving to do it, and I was thinking, what am I going to cover on this show? And then I thought, okay, well, this is a show about human flourishing. This is a really important issue to you. It's an important issue to other people, so let's let's get down to business. And in this, in this connection, several months ago, maybe three four months ago, I came up with a draft of something I called the Playtime Planner, which is me trying to think carefully about how do I want to spend my playtime in general, and then how can I plan particular weekends in advance. I think one thing that's definitely true of most people, certainly true of me, is that it is much, much better to plan weekends in advance and preferably at least several days in advance. I don't know what the dynamic is. Maybe someone can tell me, but there's something about planning a weekend on Saturday morning or even Friday night where I just don't feel the same enthusiasm. Whereas there are other times where let's say I have a little more work than I'd like. And I think, oh, there are all these things. And yet those moments where I can think of all these things that I want to do, those don't translate to the weekend unless I do it proactively. So today I thought, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come up with a with a very early draft tool, but I'm going to come up with this tool to prompt myself so that I can make the most of my weekend, so that I can have a weekend that is, as much as possible, part of a, a flourishing life. So I'm just going to share with you my initial process. And again, this is not something that has been proven to work, although I'll share with you it worked really well today, and it seems to have created a really good weekend design. But what I the reason why I'm bringing this up is because I, I, I think I'm definitely right that we need to be more intentional about this. And I'm very interested in what other people think would be a good way of approaching this. So this is, this is in no way the best. It's certainly not the best way, but it's a way. And I don't see anyone addressing the weekend crisis very well. So I'm going to start admittedly with something that's that's not at all fully developed. So here's here are the questions I asked myself, and I picked the order 
for some reasons, but the order is pretty optional. So I'll just go into them. So the first one might be interesting. What's happening at work that I should take into account when planning my playtime? What's happening at work that I should take into account when planning my playtime? And the reason I ask this is because I'm just obsessed with integration and thinking about how different parts of life interconnect. And I think part of what makes playtime good is if it integrates well with work time. And I think that depending on how work time is going or has gone, that's going to create different needs for playtime. In general, I think this is true with, say, people who have very, very physical jobs. They might want more sedentary weekends. And people who have more sedentary jobs, say, like me, might want more physical weekends. And there are all sorts of other things. So I just asked myself and I noticed, okay, this is personal stuff, but it's it's in the name of of hopefully helping you. So one thing I thought is, oh, you know, this week I, I've got I'm in a big growth phase in a couple things, and I, I feel like I'm being too hard on myself. I talked about this in week three, how to how to appreciate progress, but I don't feel like I've done quite enough of that. So that's something where uh, I just want to keep that in mind. And then I'm also, okay, I'm not sure 100% what I'm focusing on next week. There's a lot of competing things. And okay, that's just a note in my playtime planning. I need to get closure on that uh, by the end of Friday, even if I have to work late on Friday, so that I have my weekend totally clear. And then also just I'm I'm doing a lot of high altitude thinking at work. And I'm worried that if, if I'm doing maybe too much of that sometimes. So... Maybe I don't feel this weekend like I want to be reflecting too much on work. I just want to be separate from it, and then I'll come back with more altitude. So just those little things, but in different weeks, it'll be very different. So I thought, okay, that's useful context. And then I just asked myself next question, what would truly rejuvenate me for next week? And I thought, okay, well, sleep, going to bed early, uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, that's my big physical hobby. Uh, I I really could use some, some hard workouts there napping in the sun. I'm a big beach guy and I live right near the beach and then playing in the ocean. And this might think, you might think, oh, this is super trivial, but it's really good. I find it useful to activate. And then I subdivided, okay, what kind of rest do I need? Okay. Sleep, lying in the sun, lying in the sun. That's something where I really, really enjoy it, but I don't always proactively do it. What kind of exercise do I need? Okay. So I'm in, I need intense exercise, okay, jujitsu, or maybe I'll even do my friend Chad has a really hard workout. So may, maybe I'll have him walk me through that if he's willing. All right, next question. What kind of connection do I need? Connection with other people. And th- I found this really, really useful. I also asked another question, is anything I want to talk to other people about? And I thought, yeah, you know, with uh, my girlfriend who I'll spend the weekend with, I, there are some things on my mind about the future of human flourishing project, and then also some challenges with my energy work that are interesting that I, I I really want to share with her, and I want to make sure that I take time to do that. And I found this just it just seems obvious, but I found it really helpful to just write down what I want to talk about because if I if I'm not clear about this, then it's it's possible we'll just get into other topics, and and those are interesting. But I realize, oh no, I have a need to talk about these things. So I really want to make sure we talk about that. Next question, what kind of reflection do I need? Okay, well, in this case, I feel like I've been doing a lot of reflection, so I just want to enjoy myself and not do any deliberate reflection. But some weekends I feel like, oh, I want to take two hours just with a pad of paper and you know no screens and just go to the beach and think and write down whatever occurs to me. Another question, what kind of inspiration do I need? And for whatever reason, one thing that occurred to me is I want to read some Frank Lloyd Wright writings. Frank Lloyd Wright is a really interesting character. There's a lot that I like about him, and I really love his buildings, particularly the interior of his buildings. And I just feel like I need, I consider my, I'm a creative type, though not definitely not kind of any kind of visual artist. And it just, I feel like I want to be exposed to a really great individual creator. And that seems right. And then also I saw, oh, there's this movie out, First Man, and that looks really cool about Neil Armstrong. And I like Ryan Gosling. So, yeah, maybe I'll go to my girlfriend with that. Another question is, what kind of development 
do I need? And these are not, I'm not going to do all these things. I'm just, I'm just getting, I'm trying to prompt myself to come up with, I, I deliberately want more stuff than I can do because I really, then I'm doing a decent job. If I'm going into the weekend with more things than I want to do than I have time for, that's good. If I'm if I'm struggling to find things and then using Netflix as a last ditch, then then there's something off. So what kind of development do I need? Now I really want to take swimming lessons. So I get really good at swimming and that'll make it easier to go surfing. And I love the ocean already, but I'm not that great a swimmer. So maybe that's what I want to do. What kind of environment would I like? Well, fortunately, beach occurred to me. So I am there. That's good. What do I need less of? That's another good question. Then I thought, okay, screens. Now, this is a cliche, but it's probably a lot of cliches are cliches for a reason. I'll probably do a whole show sometime on cliches. And I thought, yeah, okay, so Saturday I do not want to be around screens except my Kindle screen. That that doesn't have most of the negative feel of too much screen for me, and I might want to read, and I don't have many physical books. What kind of, another one, what kind of adventure do I need? I found this one a really fun one. And I thought, okay, the thing that keeps occurring to me is I want to go snorkeling. I love the water. I love snorkeling. I have snorkeling equipment and I haven't gone snorkeling in, man, I haven't gone snorkeling in Laguna since I've moved here in what, April or May. And I just, I, I want to be doing this multiple times a week. And part of it is because People I might have snorkeled with in the past aren't around anymore, but okay, I'm going to do this. And so I texted some friends of mine. Then I also texted my girlfriend and said, okay, well, what would it take for you to go snorkeling with me? And she needs a wetsuit. So that's good. So we can handle that. And then uh, last question I thought of is what kind of fun do I need? And sometimes I feel like, oh, I really like to have some fun and sometimes not. This this weekend is kind of borderline, but I thought I always love magic shows. I'm obsessed with with magic. Uh, now there's also Halloween stuff. So I don't want to do that. And then there's an air show. And what I did is I looked through the Facebook events, but I, I found it really valuable that this time, instead of not having anything to do, and then looking at Facebook events, I had it more than I wanted to do, but then I can look at them and think, oh, is there anything really fun? So I think, okay, maybe tomorrow I'll go to the air show in Huntington beach, but maybe not. I got all this, this other stuff. So again, the questions, Again, there's there's nothing official about these, but I found them useful. What's happening at work that I should take into account when planning my playtime? What would truly rejuvenate me for next week? What kind of rest do I need? What kind of exercise do I need? What kind of connection do I need? What kind of reflection do I need? Anything I want to talk to other people about? What kind of inspiration do I need? What kind of development do I need? What kind of environment would I like? What do I need less of? What kind of adventure do I need? What kind of fun do I need? And... If you're observant or even non-observant, you probably notice that almost all these questions end with, do I need? It could also be, do I want? But I really like thinking of life and flourishing in terms of there are these interrelated needs that we have, and it's it's worth having them in mind a lot. So that I found it really useful to ask these questions. And then once I did this, it pretty quickly came to mind, okay, here's here are things that I want to do and here's what combinations. So I thought, okay, well, okay, Saturday morning, I'm going to get up, I'm going to make sure to uh, to meditate. And then I want to go, I didn't write this here, but I always want to go one wheeling. So like, I want to go on a one wheel ride a uh, pretty long distance. So I'll go for an hour, which you can go pretty far on one wheel in an hour. Like, okay, great. Then I'll come home. And, I'll, and then you know, I don't need to go through the whole day, but some highlights are, okay, I want to make sure to go to jiu-jitsu. And then I want to make sure to go uh, snorkeling with my girlfriend. I want to make sure to go to this movie and take a little bit of time to read and then make sure to have dinner so we have time to talk. And it's just amazing to me, wow, this this came together. And just by spending an hour on it, and that might seem like a lot, maybe in the future it'll be faster, but just spending an hour on it, I now have a Saturday where I think, oh, this is going to be really good and this is really going to meet my needs. And it, at least at the moment, I'm working a lot on Sundays. So Saturday is my big weekend. And so it's really cool to get that locked in. So that's that's my thought. That's the, the weekend crisis that many of us experience. And crisis, it's not a crisis like we're miserable, but it's it's another kind of crisis that's just as important, which is not making the most out of our out of our time. 
And sometimes not making the most out of our time is that just we don't have the knowledge we need in general. That's a big problem that this show addresses. But sometimes it's just we have knowledge about what would be really good for us, but we're not activating it. And today's episode is about how do we activate that? So the goal of the Playtime Planner is mostly to activate knowledge that exists somewhere in our heads so that our time can be really, really well spent. Now, what I would ask of people listening is give me suggestions on how to make, how to improve the Playtime Planner, how to make it from scratch that's way better. What, what do you find helpful about this? What else do you find helpful, particularly if you're really good at weekends? What do you do to plan them? How how far in advance do you plan them? I'm really interested in the community's input here because this is something that is is not historically a strength of mine, but I'm very, very happy to be starting to make it a strength of mine. So that's all for today. Hope you enjoyed thinking about the weekend uh, crisis and, and found some benefit from an early draft of the Playtime Planner. If you want to join the discussion on Facebook, which is where we interface a lot, you can go to facebook.com slash human flourishing project to get weekly notifications of new versions of the show. Make sure to go to humanflourishingproject.com. And if you have any feedback or questions or comments, or as I say on my other podcast, love mail or hate mail for me, you can send them to alex at alexepstein.com. And as I said at the beginning of the show, next week we are going to start with nutrition. That is going to be an adventure, and I look forward to having you join me on it. All right, that's it for this week. I'm Alex Epstein. This has been the Human Flourishing Project. <laughs>